putting YouTubers down, you profited from them. I can't with you, dude. You're dumbass. Oscar De La Hoya has casually revealed more details regarding Floyd Mayweather's unending case with federal agents. Look, I mean, people know that Floyd is Floyd, and, and that's fine. While trying to lure Shakur Stevenson, Oscar talked down to other promotional teams, including Mayweather Promotions, hoping to have the WBC champion on his side. I will fight Shak I will make that fight next if Shakur calls me. I will make this fight. And plus, don't you remember you fought YouTubers? Are you putting- Once Floyd Mayweather was seen at a basketball game in May, many had rubbished claims regarding his hostage in Dubai and had deemed it a fallacy that was born out of enmity. That's who he is. That's who he's, he's, he's a lowlife. That, that's, that's who he is. I mean, that However, Oscar De La Hoya has dug out the buried issue once again, not to describe it as a past event, but to make fresh allegations and leak more details. This is exclusive. William Cepeda will fight Shakur Stevenson. He, he casually did this while inviting Shakur Stevenson to have a discussion with him, possibly to negotiate a fight against Golden Boy fighter, William Zapata, or to woo him into becoming one of the signers of Golden Boy Promotions. Make that fight tomorrow. <laughs> As Oscar De La Hoya said this, he casually touched on Floyd Mayweather and revealed more than the public already knew. Like he's taking his time, having a hard time finding. He did. He's trying to get that lead foot to the outside. Bagging up. Arvin just needs to let his hands go. Trying to be clean. Shakur defeated Artem Harutunyan via a unanimous decision to retain his World Boxing Council lightweight belt. It was the first defense of the belt he won from Edwin De Los Santos. There was much pressure on Shakur heading into the fight based on the De Los Santos performance. And it's been money for him. Stevenson right here. Stepping back to his opposition, putting that mental pressure again on his op on the outside. Despite beating De Los Santos, Shakur was booed for his defensive style and fighting off the back foot. He later disclosed that he had a hand injury coming into the fight. Stevenson was desperate to get a knockout. That a few rounds ago. Yeah. Yeah, he just walking. A blinding jab would do that. Very close with that softball. Be more offensive minded. That don't mean they got to create your offense off. However, it never looked likely with Artem taking Shakur's punches before trying to survive until the final bell. As the fight entered the final round, some fans left the stadium before the conclusion of the bout. ESPN Plus Sports Center falls right here on ESPN. There were also some jeers from the crowd, although Shakur stated that was due to Artem not willing to engage. In his comments, Stevenson stated that he turned down a $15 million deal with top rank for five fights. Oh, would love to make a fight with you. He made a statement. That's the bottom line. Then. He indicated his desire to explore his free agency, with De La Hoya now extending an invitation. Following his fighter William Zapata's win over Giovanni Cabrera, the Mexican took his record to 31 wins in 31 fights with 27 knockouts. And I think when you're in that position, when you're the number one contender in every... That was Zapata's fourth stoppage win in a row. Oscar is keen on getting his fighter a title shot, with Shakur potentially in the running. Organization, you have to make a statement like that. And that's exactly what he did. He, he made a statement. That's the bottom line. When you're in that position, when you're the number one contender in every organization, you have to make a statement like that. And that's exactly what he did. Cabrera is very awkward as we saw with Isaac Pitbull Cruz where he took him the distance. I think this win for Zapata was excellent and now we go for the world title. Shakur, give me a call. I would love to make a call with you. He made a statement. When you're the number one contender in every organization, you have to make a statement like that. And that's exactly what he did, De La Hoya said. He was relentless. He took a few shots because uh, he's, he's very awkward. The problem Shakur faces is that he may not get a better deal elsewhere. He turned down $3 million a fight from top rank. Promoters now know what top rank is willing to pay him. Unless Stevenson can secure a deal with the Saudis, it is difficult to see where he gets a big payday unless he changes his style. In fights with Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia, both big draws, Stevenson would be the B-side. Um, as we saw with William with, uh, with Pitbull, where he took him the distance. Meanwhile, even facing someone like Devin Haney, the dream has a style that resonates a bit more with the public. Shakur had already turned down a 25% split to fight Haney during their time at 135 pounds. Since then, Shakur's stock has fallen, 
giving the narrative that he is a boring fighter. That has earned him the nickname Shakur Twitterson after suggestions he does too much talking on X. So I think, I think this win for Cepeda was excellent and now we go for the world title. Making further efforts in wooing Shakur Stevenson, Oscar De La Hoya warned him against joining Floyd Mayweather's promotional team. In an interview, Oscar De La Hoya was asked about the situation with Shakur Stevenson. Putting YouTubers down, you profited from them. I can't with you, dude. You're f dumbass. He said, this is the best place for him to be. No one else can help him like we would. I know some people want him, but their fighters haven't been getting fights. That was what I heard. And you know, he isn't done with the federal agents. He's still running around from the Dubai case. Clearly, Oscar De La Hoya is referring to Floyd Mayweather here. And, uh him leaving Mayweather promotion. Um, I guess it, it, it could have played a part. First off, it was Jeff Mayweather who, after the departure of Leonard Ellerby, spoke about fighters in Mayweather promotions not getting fights. Floyd's uncle Jeff Mayweather has shed light on how Ellerby handled the tumultuous relationship between Davis and Mayweather. Um, I mean, if you're... Speaking to Jeff Mayweather, the reporter from the Mayweather channel probed him about Ellerby asking how the former CEO dealt with Floyd and Davis's beef. I don't think there was no, like I said, I don't think there was no animosity or anything because even... It's worth mentioning that despite the disagreements between Floyd and Davis over the years, Ellerby has always praised Davis and what he has managed to accomplish in his career. He would always say that, you know, when Al Heyman has fights, you know, because he can, he can always get his, his, his fighters on Al Heyman's shows. Or do you think Whereas Mayweather has often taken sly digs at Davis since the boxer parted ways with his promotion, things had gotten so bad that Davis had even started rumors about Floyd being stuck in Dubai, as the duo openly started beefing on social media platforms. Friends want you to make pick sides, but I mean, Leonard's smart enough not to pick sides and he just kept in business. So in response to the question, Jeff acknowledged that it was indeed extremely tough for Ellerby to deal with the situation. However, he highlighted, a lot of times friends want you to pick sides. The place of prominence that I had previously, do you think that was part of it too, or it seemed like it's kind of more of an afterthought at this point? Um, well, I mean, I just think that. Yet it seems Ellerby opted to be smart with his actions, as Jeff described. But I mean, Leonard is smart enough not to pick sides, and he just kept in business. You know, I start hearing a lot of young fighters saying that, you know, that, you know, they're not getting fights. In the meantime, Schaefer has reflected on taking up Ellerby's old spot. Schaefer, a Swiss national who started his career in the banking sector, worked with Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Promotions from 2000 to 2016 and went on to start boxing promotions Ringstar Sports and Probellum with mixed results. Schaefer's a good move. I mean, very experienced. He's been involved in really big fights. Involved in one of the biggest fights, and that's Floyd and However, since he has promoted some great pay-per-view fights with Mayweather, he took the job while being in the good books of the former five-division champion. With that said, Leonard Ellerby looks likely to have left because of the feud between Floyd Mayweather and Gervonta Davis. But one can't help wondering whether it played a key part in his departure. Are gonna like really put their foot back in there and, and try to, to really elevate Mayweather promotions? Oh, of course. I think so. All right, man. Also, Jeff Mayweather spoke about an internal crisis that could possibly have incited the split between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Leonard Ellerby. He claimed many young fighters in Mayweather promotions are complaining that they aren't fighting, as Leonard Ellerby spends more time with PBC, neglecting his primary assignment. But, to be honest, I'm not really surprised. I mean, do you think Richard Schaefer would take on this role if he didn't really plan on elevating the promotion? Well, I mean... I'm starting to hear a lot of young fighters say they don't fight, and who is to blame for this? I have no idea, Jeff Mayweather said with worried eyes. So basically, if you can't get work, you have to do something. However, Jeff Mayweather felt that linking up with Richard Schaefer was indeed a good move. We're early, man. Yeah, Alright, I want to talk to you about uh, big news came down yesterday. Leonard Ellerby no longer in... Though many fighters may not be having fights, that's not the case with Kermel Moten, who moved his career up to four wins in all four fights with three knockouts.
great. So. We fought a guy with 18 fights that has more knockouts than you on fights. How do you feel? You stopped him? Yeah. Um, Though a baby-faced assassin at just 18 years old, Kermel Moten continues to beat up fully grown men under the watchful eye of his mentor, the former five-weight world boxing champion Floyd Mayweather Jr. You know, that's what I'm going to keep doing, you know, whenever I buy any cards, I'm going to come, I'm going to try and create performance, and uh, so hopefully we've made it back. You know, there's, there's Moten's debut last year was the most anticipated of 2023 as he's been the talk of fight clubs in Las Vegas for years and continues to rack up wins in impressive fashion, including his one Saturday, which he scored against Nikolai Buzolin at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. Moten had advantages in both speed and power and put them to use early in the fight as he dropped Buzolin in the first before stopping him in the second. A lot of my fighters are fighting in Mexico uh, on my, uh, under, uh, my exhibition. Moten advanced his pro boxing record to 4-0 with the win and said after the fight, that he's long been aware his super featherweight rivals have a target on his back because of his relationship with Mayweather? In a statement sent to Gay News Source, Moten said, I know there's all eyes on me with Floyd behind my back. It puts a target on me. I've felt pressure my whole life, so this is nothing for me. I'm used to it. I know that I just have to show up and do what I do. And I want them all to do it. You know, I'm part of all the young fighters that's, you know, under the Mayweather Promotions banner. And I just want to help, I just want to continue to help take fighters to the next level. Moton competed on the main card of the Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal event broadcast on Phantom PPV and UFC Fight Pass. It was one of the biggest platforms he's been put on so far. It felt great to be in there with a huge crowd like this tonight, he said. Uh, Record-breaking record numbers. So, family, you know, I'm proud of you guys, and let's continue to work together. Absolutely, absolutely. Big things in the future. <laughs> the atmosphere really pushed me to be my best. I put in a lot of work at the gym, and I knew it was going to pay off. Moton finished. I'm going to get back in the gym and keep working hard so I can put on another great performance. Thank you. Where's Rock? Rock? Let me get him. Rock. Yeah. How good did you oh, amazing. <laughs> if Moton keeps putting people away like that, as he continues to level up in terms of opposition, then he may well be the next big thing in boxing. If he's not going to try to do anything with it, and he knows that, he knows Floyd's value, he knows Floyd's notoriety, so basically put himself in a good position. In a good position. And on the second point, Oscar De La Hoya made regarding Shakur Stevenson's invitation to another promotional team, it was Floyd Mayweather who invited Shakur Stevenson into joining Mayweather Promotions. He want to fight the best they got out there. Um, he's asking... Um, Floyd Mayweather was asked about the top five fighters in the lightweight division, and he responded, As of right now, well, the two guys, the biggest puncher I feel at 135 will probably be Gervonta Davis but the most skillful fighter will be hands down Shakur Stevenson. Can he fight the best? Um, I believe his contract is coming. Talking about Shakur Stevenson, Floyd Mayweather compared his skillfulness to Pernell Whitaker, who wasn't the heaviest puncher, but had the skill set to take on the best and get the better of them. I and I've, I've always been there for him. And just over the years, you can see I've always been positive. I believe his contract is coming to an end, so hopefully, we can come together and I can take him to the levels that he needs and make the fights happen that he wants. Always said great things about him, always pushed him to be great. And um, he then referenced the famous video that began the speculation about Floyd's Dubai case in which Gervonta Davis accused him of sending an attack. He denied Gervonta Davis's claims and explained his intentions saying, I need all fighters. I said, I need all the young fighters that's making money in this. A lot of times they like to compare certain fighters and then I say certain things and they say, oh, he's hating. There's no difference from when I talked about the thing with Hervanta. For the boxing, what I need you guys to do is do this. Uh, brother, it's Chrome. For instance, when I said that I need all the young fighters making money in the sport of boxing, and what I need you guys to do is do this. 
Whether it's Chromat, Lewis, Mercedes, Gucci, we need to take our money and invest in real estate so that we can live the same great life when our careers are over. So I guess he took that as he's the only one that wears Chromat, he's the only one that wears Louis Vuitton, he's the only one that wears Mercedes. Home heart, Gucci, Louis. Last time I checked, we've got fighters all over the world that wear top flight clothes that make good money. Even the fighters that don't make good money find a way to fly jets and fly whips. Mercedes, we need to take our money and invest in real estate so that we can live the same great life when our careers are over. As for Oscar De La Hoya, it isn't surprising to see him try to woo more fighters, seeing the recent tragedy surrounding Ryan Garcia. He was recently banned for a year following his test failures after his fight against Devin Haney, and now he's been permanently expelled from World Boxing Council after his anti-racist chant on an X space. First of all, first of all, we at Golden Boy, including myself, we don't condone. Oscar De La Hoya on Saturday expanded on his recent post on X condemning the racist comments of his suspended fighter, Ryan Garcia, explaining that the rehab-bound Garcia is in a bad, bad place now. Really bad. Any, you know, racism and we don't condone any racism. It's just wrong, De La Hoya told video reporters Friday of Garcia posting vicious comments toward the late victim of police violence, George Floyd. I heard Ryan's going to rehab. It's a step in the right direction. And any type of, it's, it's just wrong. It's wrong and... Uh... Garcia, 25, has behaved erratically for months. Throughout the promotion of his April 20th fight against WBC lightweight title holder Devin Haney in Brooklyn, New York, and afterward, when he submitted three positive tests for the banned performance-enhancing substance, Osterine and the New York State Athletic Commission changed his impressive three-knockdown triumph to a no contest. It's, it's not good what he said and, um, you know. Garcia was also fined $10K by New York, forced to return his guaranteed purse money and suspended until at least April 20th, 2025. I know Ryan, he is not a racist guy, he is not that, De La Hoya said. I don't know if it's his drinking or him doing mushrooms or drugs. We strongly feel that I just... De La Hoya, who has completed his own stints in rehab, said he had reached out to Garcia as recently as last week. He seems good. I told him, you're suspended, but there's other things you can do, De La Hoya said. I've always said I'm here for him. I just heard Ryan saying that he's going into rehab. Um, While De La Hoya has drawn some criticism for not intervening sooner, given the multiple red flags that waved around Garcia, including the PED positives and the subsequent arrest for felony vandalism in Beverly Hills, California, he again supported Garcia on the matter of the WBC suspending Garcia from WBC activities. It's, it's a step in the right direction for him personally. In that move, WBC President Mauricio Suleiman quoted Garcia's parents expressing their own concerns for their son's welfare. You have to gather all the information before you make such a decision, De La Hoya said of the WBC. I am no doctor. I want to talk to him and get to the bottom of it. But yeah, we at Golden Boy and I've spoken to my partner Bernard. While De La Hoya said he was pleased to see Garcia post that he has split with his longtime manager, Guadalupe Valencia. It's about time. He was a bad communicator, De La Hoya said. He speculates that Garcia is surrounded by a troubling circle of friends and acquaintances. Bernard Hopkins and we just don't condone that. It's, it's, it's wrong. What's your, what's your initial reaction when you first heard it? Um, I, I... When he's around people taking something drinking, I can see Ryan going along with it, De La Hoya said. Ryan needs to look at his circle and get rid of everybody. He's right now, he's right now, first of all, it's wrong. Totally wrong. And, you know, his, I don't know if it's his drinking, I don't know if it's... As for his own lessons of rehab, De La Hoya said, other people wanting to send me, it never worked. You feel sorry for yourself. Feel people are against you. What Garcia is apparently doing to check himself into rehab is a good thing. You've got to go yourself.
Davis and Mayweather have had a complicated relationship over the years, leading to a split after the boxing legend mentored and promoted him from the beginning of his pro career. He was, a, he was a young kid, came up to me when he was a kid, wanted an autograph. Um, I signed his phone for him and told him, you'll be world champion someday and you, I'll be your promoter. Years later, he was working with some people from our team because our team is huge. We, we, we got guys. The spat between Gervonta Davis and Floyd Mayweather was recently renewed when Davis accused the boxing legend of criticizing him and as a result, implicated him in a money-related dispute, purportedly leaving Mayweather stranded in Dubai. The controversy then unfolded on social media platforms. It's in DC, Baltimore, and now. Absolutely. In a video shared on Friday morning, Mayweather's remarks, though not directly addressing Davis, were interpreted by the latter as aimed at him. Mayweather emphasized the sacrifices he made during his career, implying that some fighters are focused on the wrong aspects of fame and fortune. I made so many sacrifices. Y'all looking at the end, y'all looking at the end results. Perceiving Mayweather's comments as a personal attack, Davis retaliated on Instagram, alleging that Mayweather is unable to leave Dubai due to financial disputes with undisclosed parties. Davis's fiery response included a direct accusation, labeling Mayweather a hater and insinuating financial mismanagement. Y'all not looking at this shit where y'all go look at the interview and Zab gonna tell y'all, you know, with me being champion, with me already. Davis, a rising star in boxing, took to Instagram and Twitter to air his grievances against Mayweather. The online feud escalated further when a Twitter user suggested Mayweather might be held hostage in Dubai, prompting Davis to assert that Mayweather owes money to individuals and is consequently unable to leave the country leave Dubai due to unpaid debts. These claims seem to gain credibility when Mayweather failed to appear in Mexico to promote an exhibition rematch with Victor Ortiz, an event he had hinted at on Instagram before removing the post. Despite these rumors, Mayweather has been very much on the move. Few days ago, he walked out Kermel Moten into the ring as he won his fourth fight. He was seen attending a Clippers vs. Mavericks game in Las Vegas and made news with a generous act, donating 30k dollars to a homeless individual in downtown Los Angeles. His attendance at AEW Double or Nothing Further dispelled any doubts about his freedom to travel. At the AEW event, the atmosphere was electric as Strickland and Cage faced each other in a highly anticipated match. The two athletes put on a spectacular show, with Strickland ultimately retaining his championship to the delight of the audience. After his victory, Strickland shared a moment of celebration with Mayweather, who was seated in the front row. And that's all for now. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications to get notified when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.